nao na i kahala me ka lehua He hale lehua no i anaka no e O ka uno ia e ano ine Eli ane ho i o ka hiki mai A hiki mai no oko A hiki pū no me ke aloha Aloha e Aloha e Aloha e E pule kako Let us pray Maka ino no o kamakua me ke keiki, me ka uhane he mulele, mahalo nei mako ia oe, no ko malama ia e nei ka mako lakino, e ho'o mohala mai ka mako halavai, me ka na au au mai kalani, me ka ho'o po mai kai. Most gracious Heavenly Father, blessed be thy name. We thank you for all of your blessings, and humbly we ask your bless- blessing on this gathering and filming of Culturized. Father, we ask your blessing on Makani and his entire crew, for they are performing surely thy work of preserving the culture of Hawaii. And Father, we ask your continued protection on all of us and their families. Allow us to survive this pandemic you have sent upon earth, and allow us to survive so we may continue in thy mission of healing on this earth. Those things we pray, no kamea, no keapuni a mekamana, a meka ho'onani ia amalo atu, amene. And amen. And mahalo. Amen. And mahalo, mahalo, mahalo for that. If you're joining us on Culturize and you heard me just say Dr. Kalani Shintani, not also, also a kahu. So first, mahalo. I, I, I love that. And um, thank you for being here, first of all. Thank you I for know having you, me. You're absolutely busy. Yeah, thank you for having me. The, the, the protocols. And before we get into the Dr. Shintani, kahu. Um, you are a kahu, and a lot of times people, they, they, they hear the word kahu and they think religious, but you are also a healer, a kahu of healing, um, even, even on the Western medical side, but also the traditional side as well. Um, can you, the, the kahu council of healers, kupuna council, mm-hmm. you're a part of, tell us about that. Well, the kupuna council of healers came about because, um, going back, uh, when I, I think a lot of folks know that I helped to start the mm-hmm. YNI diet program. Mm-hmm. But um, this came about because after I finished uh, medical school and nutrition school, when I came to YNI, uh, uh, actually I was guided to go to YNI spiritually. Mm-hmm. And I, I was a little, not a little, I was horrified at the very poor health of mm-hmm. the native Hawaiian people. There was a report called Eola Mao mm-hmm. and uh, Office of Technology Assessment that showed that Hawaiians actually had the worst health in the nation. And a lot of it had to do with diet and lifestyle and diabetes and obesity and so forth. So I wanted to do a, a diet-related program. And, uh, but there's also the co- concept of cultural genocide. I think mm-hmm. a lot of folks mm-hmm. know what that means. Mm-hmm. That over the years, after Hawaii was colonized, the Hawaiian culture became uh, gradually mm-hmm. destroyed. And I thought if destruction of the culture uh, causes uh, disease and death, mm-hmm. I thought then restoration of the culture would restore health and reduce death. So in the Wai'anae Diet Program, a lot of folks don't think of it as a diet program, mm-hmm. but it wasn't just a diet program. It was a cultural renaissance program to revive the culture because it's not only diet that produces health, but cultural revival. So as a result of that, I started bringing in uh, a kupuna, the, mm-hmm. the kahunas, mm-hmm. the healers, who were underground because uh, when Hawaii was uh, Cult, uh, was colonized, mm-hmm. uh, it became illegal to practice kahuna healing. Wow. So I started, uh, I started bringing out all of the kahunas, mm-hmm. the healers uh, in, in YNI. And so every night during the 21 day program, we had a nutrition lesson, we had a medical lesson, uh-huh. and we had a healing lesson of traditional Hawaiian healers. And actually, uh, some of the you know, I brought you a whole couple, and oh, some mahalo. of the and some of the uh, 
the faculty, the old time mm-hmm. healers are in this book. Wow. So, so you, you got together, did you, did you like scour all yeah, of yes, Hawaii actually, or the yeah. earth? No, 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 actually mainly the Waianae community wow. because I figured the proximity would be important. For frame of reference, what what years was this about? Like okay, 80s? The, the first one was eighty nine. Uh-huh. The first program was eighty nine, and uh, I started bringing out the traditional healers, mm-hmm. but it was illegal to practice. Oh. So I thought it was extremely important to preserve the ancient traditional Hawaiian healing arts. And as you, uh, I used to go to these conferences, uh-huh. and little by little, the number of healers. At first was over 100, then was 70, then was 50, wow. then was 30. And I said, you know, if we don't do something, the art is going to die off. So I wrote the law. I'm, I'm actually uh, answering yeah. your question. I, I, I want to I get yeah. into the law, but if you're joining yeah. us on Culturize, we're talking with Dr. Kalani Shintani. Bringing you what matters. Viewers can receive the Star Advertiser digital full access subscription for just $9.95 per month. Go to StarAdvertiser.com and click on subscribe. Use the code AHIGHTHING. Aloha Termite and Pest Control, your local and leading pest and termite control solution in the state. Always providing you superior service with Aloha. Sitting with Dr. Kalani Shantani, we're, we're talking about the, this Kupuna Council. Um, you looked th- throughout Waianae. For healers, and there were you, you thought there was hundreds, but it actually was was less. Well, no. In the beginning, uh-huh. I would go to these uh, statewide uh, kahu- uh, mm-hmm. healers conferences. Right. Basically, there were right. Kahuna conferences, right. and the first one on the Big Island had over hundred, and oh. then gradually the number. Oh, and I said, I we have to do something to preserve the art. So I. I proposed the law to exempt Hawaiian healers from licensing. Wow. While um, a lot of uh, people in the Hawaiian community mm-hmm. were looking for licensing, I said, no way the, the kahunas want to be licensed right. because that means they're controlled by the state. Wow. So I, I wrote a law that exempted them from licensing so they could practice freely as a cultural practice. But the legislature said, well, how do we regulate them? Mm. That's what the licensing for. And I said, that's easy. Have them regulated by the kupunas, because that's the way it was in the old days. Because if if a kahuna misbehaved, the kupunas (laughs) would take them down right away, right? right? And and, uh, so we created a kupuna council. Wow. Uh, And that's how the kupuna council came about. And it's actually formed by law, it's written in the Hawaii Revised Statutes 453-2C. And as you know, as mm-hmm. people probably know, I was a lawyer before I became <laughs> so, yeah, a doctor. I, right? <laughs> lawyer so, and doctor. Yeah. So you wrote this law and you created this council. And now, is it fair to say that this, this is the senior council like mandated by state law? Like they That's are, right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So the, the, the Kupuna Council that uh-huh. we are involved with, mm-hmm. and you're involved uh-huh. with it too, uh, was the first uh, to be sanctioned. It was they actually had to be impaneled by um, Papa Ola Lokahi, okay. and we were the first. Wow. And we are still the we're the one that has continued uh, in the tradition, tradition uh, um, uh, most I guess say robustly. Right. We we have a functioning Kupuna Council. It, it, and that, I was going to say that because because it's it's a formal council, and you you folks meet, and there's there's meetings, and you talk about mm-hmm. uh, moving or, or perpetuating practicing and moving the, right. the, the the healing practices forward. Were there certain practices, healing practices that you focused on at the time it was created, or any any kahuna that you found? Well, it would be any kahuna, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. the ones that we do. F- Focus on are la'au lapa'au. Mm-hmm. That's uh, herbal healing. Mm-hmm. Um, lomi lomi, uh, ho'oponopono, mm-hmm. kahea, wow. and spiritual healing. Wow! And that thinking about it, that has never been done before in modern written Hawaiian history right. to to bring uh, kupuna and specifically kahu together as healers. Um, how many years now has it been? So eighty nine was it was formed? No, no, eighty nine. I started the wine I diet, mm. but as the years went by, because the the Kahuna uh-huh. population was right. gradually dwindling, 
I wrote the first draft in 99, so 10 years later I wrote the first draft. Actually, I had been uh -huh. writing it, but You're 10 right. years later we submitted it. And um, uh, we first submitted it as a um, trial, uh -huh. as, a, as a, a, a test uh -huh. law, and then we had a sunset. And because it worked fine for three years, then 03, uh, it was finally written into permanent law. Wow, so mm -hmm. the law passed permanent law. What was that like um, to, to look for these kahuna and these healers? It, it, I mean, you just went to their house. I mean, there's protocol no, uh, to that, yeah, right? Uh, no, but actually, I'm, I met most of them at the conferences. Wow. Yeah, uh, because there were, and, and the conferences were statewide. Mm -hmm. They would have Papa Ka'alakea from Maui, mm -hmm. and, you know, of course, Papa Owai uh -huh. from the Big Island, and we had Uncle Kepa from Kauai, and, of course, the ones on Oahu, like Auntie Lilia Hale, and, of course, Mama, of course, I, Auntie Aggie. Auntie Aggie. Yeah. I remember a conference that I attended, and you, you, I think you were speaking at one of them. It, I, and I clearly remember, I, I, I knew of you, and I, I knew who you were, and I was like, wow. I was blown away. It was you, and I think, uh, who was the, the, he created the pacemaker. Um, oh, yeah, Earl Bakken was on was my board. Yeah, well. I, I started a foundation to promote uh, health in Hawaii, the Hawaii Health Foundation, and uh, Dr. Earl Bakken, the inventor, of, inventor uh -huh. of the pacemaker, was on my board. I, I remember attending this conference and listening to both of you speak. And I think at, at the time, I, was, I just had graduated college and I was starting a, a fitness company. Right? And, and it was, I didn't want to do like traditional fitness. I wanted to be more of a health and wellness company. And I remember both of you speaking and it was like, wow. It's not fitness I want to go into. It's it's health, wellness, and healing I want to go into. So after these conferences that you got together, were there other Kupuna Council at the time uh, throughout the uh, state? Or? Actually, uh, um, at at first there was one Kupuna Council, mm -hmm. and then they realized that there were differences on the different islands. Mm -hmm. So we amended the law so that we could have any number, mm -hmm. uh, but. Um, there had to be at least three healers, mm -hmm. actually three members, mm -hmm. and we need, had to have uh, acknowledged traditional Hawaiian healers on the, on the council. And so um, uh, there, there were councils mm -hmm. on, uh, I think, every island. Wow. Yeah. And so this council being the senior council in Hawaii and I, now, correct me if I'm wrong, so this, this is a council that, so say if somebody was a healer, um, compared to say a, a like a massage therapist gets licensed from the state. Now the equivalent as a native Hawaiian healer, you can see this council and they can certify you. You, you could go to any council, wow. any uh, of the uh, official councils, mm -hmm. and present your case, and you can be certified. It, it, so it's almost it's almost like apl like applying for a PhD. You have to. You, well, yeah, it's like your that was your PhD wow, committee, right? Wow, yeah. that's a, that's an interesting way to put it. You know, because I I remember the first time sitting in front of you folks. I, I, I don't think I could have been more. If you can imagine sitting in front of twelve kupuna, not only kupuna but but healers and kahu and doctors, I remember just Uncle Kamaki Kanahele just asking me questions. What do you know about this plant, that plant, this, and you just, and you folks are just asking me questions. It's like, oh my gosh, it's it's an intense, and that's what I thought about. It's like this is like getting a PhD because right, you yeah. have to request right. to sit in front of you folks. Right. You, you want to show the there, picture of the council. So this yeah. is the council. I love this. This now you put together this book. Yes. Was this the original council? No, there's the one that uh, existed at the, at the time that I put the book together. Wow. Yeah. So. This council, imagine, uh, I had to sit in front of, and like getting your PhD, that's what I thought about, is because they just barraged me with mm -hmm. questions. Well, first of all, I had to apply, right? And they just ask you questions, and I, I love how you folks did it, because Uncle Kamaki would just tell me, I'm gonna name some plants, yes or no. I don't wanna know anything else. Just yes or no if you know it or not. And so wow. I, I personally have to say mahalo for, for putting this council together. But any, any other healers, anybody in this, in this field can sit and, and be certified. By this or actually by any, any, other, any other official council as well wow. so that they can go to their own island and seek out their islands. 
council. From this council, then you had a huge part in creating the traditional Hawaiian healing center. Yes, that's a whole nother story. Wow. Uh, See, I can sit be, with you. Yeah, for, because for the days. healing center came about, that was envisioned early on. That was envisioned back in 92. Wow. Uh, uh, in 92, we won a national award from the U.S. Secretary of Health and mm -hmm. Human Services. And because we had such notoriety, many people from all over the world were asking us about it. But we, I, I joke <laughs> about it. I said, we were a homeless program. We didn't <laughs> even have our own facility. But yet we made an impact on the world. So then I started proposing mm -hmm. a building mm -hmm. for the, the Waianae diet and the traditional Hawaiian healers. So that was the origin of that. I'm concept. always impressed by your foresight. You, you're always thinking ahead, creating this council, traditional Hawaiian healing center. So again. Oh, sorry. It, but no, actually, don't credit me. Well, credit <laughs> Keakua. Keakua, uh, uh, Yeah, I, the vision uh -huh. seemed to come to me and they come about. With Dr. Kalani Shintani talking, Kupuna Council, traditional Hawaiian healing center, um, I wanted to read your accolades. <laughs> and it was like it's a whole entire show but i love the fact that that so high school let, let's kind of go back a little where'd you go to high school okay let me explain <laughs> let me. <laughs> i have to explain i, I went to punahou uh-huh but my parents neither of them went to high school we're very i'm, I'm just a humble i'm Lo just a regular uh -huh. local brother slipper uh -huh. kid <laughs> and my family is all kalihi my uh -huh. parents went to kalakaua but my dad had cancer when I uh -huh. was small. Uh -huh. So he actually wanted us to have better education. So he worked really hard so he could put us, mm -hmm. me and my brother, through Punahou. Wow. Yeah, but I think I was the only kid there whose parents never even went go to high school. <laughs> and and so. you were the only one that with no slippers. And that's the amazing thing about me because not a lot of people realize that you, you are a true local boy. Yeah. Um, and ethnic background, not a lot of people realize that you have... Coco, you have Hawaiian blood. Well, the, yeah, the, the, the strange, that's a very strange story uh -huh. because when my mother died, I was mm -hmm. Hanai by Auntie Aggie. Uh -huh. And uh, then Kamaki Kanahele became my uh -huh. brother. Uh -huh. And then when Auntie Meleka came to Wainai, she says, oh, you're our Ohana. And I said, oh, yeah, because Auntie Aggie uh -huh. Hanai me. She says, no, the Shintanis married the Kanahele's on Ni'ihau. And I went, what? <laughs> So actually, my connection comes through Ni'ihau. Yeah. So all you didn't things. know growing up. I did not know. Wow. It was, it, yeah, it was. And and Shintani is actually a pretty prominent name in Ni'ihau. In, in Ni'ihau, probably only in Ni'ihau. Wow. <laughs> so you, that's amazing. Yeah, that that yeah. so Auntie Mileka Kanahele was the one that told you no. You, you, you're, you, yeah, you, 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 your family is married into the Kanahele family. I went, oh my. Go and on. you are the product of, the, wow. Yeah. Um, so Punahou High School, when you grew up, um, uh, ethnically, what was in the household? Uh, did, were your parents very, very no, Japanese? No, very, 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 lo local? very local mm. Japanese because my grandmother was a picture bride. And uh, she came over... Uh, my grandfather's mm. first wife died. She came over as a picture bride, mm. no English. Uh, they had, uh, uh, she, he had two kids, she had three with him, and then he dies. So my mother's family grew up very poor wow. uh, in Kalihi wow. uh, because mother mm. spoke no English, mm. no skills, had to raise five kids, being a maid and taking in mm. sewing. And so when my father got cancer, my mother thought, oh my God, it's gonna happen all over again. Mm. So that's when, you know, we were under a lot of stress in those days. And and of course, with all that, you've you've pushed through. Once you once you graduated from Punahou, where did you go? Then I went to, uh, I actually was supposed to be a phys, I have aptitude in physics. I was supposed to be a <laughs> physicist. I went to University of Illinois. And I just got a business degree because my dad uh -huh. was a businessman and then I wanted to do more in the world, uh -huh. so I went to law school. Uh -huh. And then, long story short, spiritual things started uh -huh. happening to me in law school, and I started having visions of uh -huh. me being a doctor. And wow. that's why I went to medical school. So I, I love the fact that local boy from Kalihi, right, goes to Punahou, 
business degree, uh, physicist, doctor, and then lawyer. Nu- lawyer. And I have a nutrition degree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just did, at what point were you like, okay, may, maybe I should, maybe I should uh, put this all together? Did mm-hmm. you come back to Hawaii right after? Actually, that's all. You know, Kiakua has had yes. a hand in my career. Everything. When I was in, when I was finishing up in Boston mm-hmm. uh, at Harvard studying nutrition, I said, "Oh, what am I going to do?" And I prayed to the Lord, mm-hmm. "What shall I do?" And then, long story short, two days later, YNI calls me up. Wow! And I that I figured oh, the Lord has spoken. That's the that's the call. So, yeah, so that's how I wound up in YNI. And then from there, uh, you focus a little bit more on nutrition. Right. Of course, yeah, you, well, you have your preventive your medicine, but I also focused on reviving Hawaiian culture because I thought because see, easier to it was much easier to teach Hawaiians mm-hmm. how they used to eat rather mm-hmm. than saying, well, you need to eat ten grams of this and forty grams of that and twenty thirty <laughs> percent. They're not going to remember right. that. But if I say, oh, look how look how they would eat in the old days. Uh. You know, and they say, oh, cannot fry. I said, did the Hawaiians fry in the old days? No more, no more frying pan, right? We're going to dive into the Waianae diet. Food is medicine. Food is culture. Sitting with Dr. Kalani Shintani right here on Culturized. So you have these amazing degrees and amazing, you've studied, you, you, Akua brought you back to Waianae and you looked at, as we were talking about, you looked at the, the health and wellness of, of Native Hawaiians. What, what was it? Of course, Kiakua, uh, how, did he, how did he speak to you? What was it that you realized the Waianae diet is a thing? It's, again, it's, a, it's mm-hmm. kind of it, a it long just story. But, no, actually, um, uh, when I was in Boston, mm-hmm. uh, because... Uh, some folks have heard of macrobiotics. Mm-hmm. They, because my dad had had cancer, and by mm-hmm. the way, he survived. He wow. was one of the few long-term survivors mm-hmm. of colon cancer. Um, and I always thank Kiakuo mm-hmm. for that. Um, in macrobiotics, they were turning cancer patients around. And in macrobiotics, they go very much to traditional mm-hmm. diet ways. Uh, and so I started looking at traditional diets around the world. When I studied mm-hmm. nutrition, uh, in Boston, uh, I started tr- studying traditional diets around the world, and I realized the Hawaiian diet was very healthy, and most people didn't realize that. And so when I came back, I said, gee, it, it, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. If the problem is diet and mm-hmm. nutrition, then the answer is diet and nutrition, but there's also the concept of cultural genocide. Mm-hmm. So it made sense to restore the cultural diet to restore the health, not just with food, but by restoring the culture. So that's how, and then and then after that, I realized that Molokai was doing something mm-hmm. like that, the Molokai diet. Mm-hmm. And so I worked with some of the, fo- and that's how I met Helen, by the way. Helen and was, kind of Valley, one of the, yeah. yeah. And uh, I met Claire Hughes, who mm-hmm. was, who was uh, one of the uh, pioneers in Hawaiian uh, nutrition, and then of course Kekuni Blaisdell, mm-hmm. who was one of my teachers uh-huh. at the medical school. So they're, by the way, they're all in this Hawaiian diet book. So they, they, you guys just focused on, and you looked at it. So you looked at the Hawaiian diet. Was there a certain period of time you looked at the diet? Was it oh was pre-contact, it pre-contact, pre wow. pre cook. So, so not the Hawaiian food we eat today. No, 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 <laughs> so, no. Because no. a lot of people think, oh, the Hawaiian food we you no, can eat Hawaiian no, food and it's no, healthy. No. But today's Hawaiian food is nothing in Hawaii. Nothing in spam musubi is truly Hawaiian. <laughs> <laughs> but even our lau lau that we make today yeah. is is just salty. And well, pork but fat. no, no, they did do no lau lau. They did do, but that was only occasional. You know, no. they would put them in the. You know, they would. So it wasn't a regular thing. Wow. No, that was only celebration, right? What was like a what was a normal pre contact? No, no, it was mainly poi, sweet potato, uh, uh, ulu, um, vegetables, uh, ho'il, uh, wow. limu, um, vegetable, fruit. Of course, fruit uh-huh. and and then occasional fish and and on special occasions uh, they would eat. Uh, uh, 
pig. Uh-huh. But you know, the, the, tr- the truth is, how often you go make an emu right. and cook pig, right? It makes sense. So, so in contemporary times, somebody would look at that and go, that's a lot of carbs. Right. What, uh, what's, what would you say to them? Because I, I, I say, understand. I, I, yeah, I, I, have a, I have an easy answer to uh-huh. that. The people who live the longest eat high carb diets. Wow. Look at Okinawa, for uh-huh. example. They live the longest. They, their, their, their carbohydrate intake is like 78%. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. But they eat no processed carbs. That's uh, the key. That's Most the key. of the carbs in the U.S. Mm-hmm. are processed sugar or white flour. High carbs. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. When you created this Y and I diet, you actually had pushback, like at the top, like oh, yeah. federal. Like, oh yeah, it yeah, was. Yeah. Um, what do you call those guys? The Surgeon General. Well, they, they did. I mean, they didn't know anything about us. <laughs> but no, don't no. The only time they saw it uh-huh. was after I had my results, and they. Oh, went, so they. they oh were, my God! Uh, yeah. yeah. So they were questioning the results because to them it was. Like, what, yeah, what's going on? It's not it's not meeting the dietary guidelines of the United States. Well, there was the Hawaiians was better than that. Wow. So we we should and is it fair to say it was it was pretty much plant based? Yeah. Wow. So Well the thing no, this is what I say. Uh, How do we know that they didn't eat meat all the time? Mm-hmm. No more ice box. <laughs> right? I the the way your brain thinks it it's funny because we would simply know these things, but we but we don't. Like here, here's just kind of an offshoot. One of the most profound th- of many profound things that you say. We were talking about dairy products. We're the only species that drinks right, milk exactly. from another dairy, species. Dairy should not be a, <laughs> a, a staple. I mean, you can do it occasionally, but should it be a staple? So as this Y and I diet started, who who was your first it, it, what, test subjects or? Well, actually, what I did was. Um, I actually have some background in community organizing. Mm-hmm. So I went to each ahupua'a in Waianae, uh-huh. and I got leaders from each. Mm-hmm. So Nana Kule was uh-huh. Auntie Aggie, uh-huh. Mama, uh-huh. and Kamaki. Uh, Waianae, uh, actually had Maili, mm-hmm. that was Ho'o'ipo de Canberra, who was chair of uh, Waianae yeah, yeah. Comp Center. Uh, Waianae was Auntie Frenchy de Soto. Mm-hmm. Makaha was uh, Eric Eno's uh-huh. folks, uh-huh. That, that group. So I got leaders from each each community so that assuming it was successful and I knew it was going to be successful uh-huh. they would spread it to their community uh, yeah. what, what, what was what was the feedback by Native Hawaiians and you putting them on oh, the <laughs> well <laughs> Kamaki keeps telling me the story they were ready to kill me no <laughs> but, <laughs> but 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 mama Auntie uh-huh. Aggie could see spirit you know she, she had spiritual yeah. sight uh-huh so she said, wait a minute, uh-huh. this boy is trying to help. Mm. So he, she he he held the hand of... Uh, what's what's uh, one uh, of the, like, what, what was it on the diet? What, just like a daily... A oh, daily no, what, what I was telling yeah. you, it was but poi, was it, sweet potato, ulu, vegetables, fruit. Cause I remember, nothing was processed. Well, I remember Uncle Kamaki going, I've never ate that much poi in my yeah. life. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, how, but the... But but the truth is that's how they used to eat. Wow. So on the average, what do you think? How much poi would would one person consume? Oh, in a day? I, I I wouldn't say because all we had was a big poi bowl, and, and they would eat going. until until they were satisfied. Because wow. yeah. and then and then of course they had others. They had sweet potato, uh-huh. ulu, uh-huh. taro, you know, all of those other staples as well. And you you brought the wine idea to a point where it was it was starting to be marketed and packaged what, right what, well zip, what, well actually so i realized that poi is too expensive mm-hmm. so i converted the nutri- nutrition because i had a nutrition background mm-hmm. i knew how to convert it to modern foods uh. so that people could do, so that became the basis of the zippy's food and um and that's what that's and what so t- for the general public, <laughs> I I converted it to. You just read my uh, mind. Yeah, yeah. So so the peace diet uh-huh. is the current version of a lot of the information that was in the Wyanai diet. And so the peace diet. That's um, if you want to look it up, it's peacediet.org. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this would be the equi- the parallel equivalent to the YNI diet well, in contemporary terms. Well, uh, similar. In, in, yeah, um, in not so many words. There, this one is more most. This one is completely vegan, but uh, 
The reason I do that is Hawaiians actually, for the most part, mm -hmm. especially if you live Mauka, mm -hmm. were vegan most of the time, and they would eat fish or you know, other flesh uh, occasionally. Mm -hmm. They weren't vegetarian. Right. But so this one shows people how to, for, for the most part, how to do it uh, the other days, yep, that they're not eating fish. Sometimes people look at this book and they go, the peace diet, and they see this plate. Pe peace diet, yeah. Yeah. This came about not with the intention to right. make this plate. Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, because I try as much as possible, I'll tell you, because w when, when I heard you speak about who the USDA, is the USDA that makes that plate right, with right, the dairy thing? Right, right. Um, and portions. Ex how did this come about, the peace diet? Okay, the peace diet came about because I was trying to, I never, I never liked the food guide pyramid, mm -hmm. and actually the federal government realized it wasn't very good because uh -huh. the worst foods were at the top of the pyramid. Uh -huh. So when Obama came into office, he made the, the my right. plate and the my plate I, was better uh -huh. but i wanted to make my version mm -hmm. of the my plate how i would mm -hmm. see it and when i laid it out i said oh my gosh it comes out looking like the peace sign so <laughs> i figured i would tap into modern culture uh -huh. you know if we're talking about Again, culture the foresight. but this is american culture mm -hmm. right so i tapped into the modern american culture of peace and and also, you see that even this, it, it, what you ingest actually affects you psychologically. Oh, yes, all of that. Yeah, and so actually in here, I have chapters on heart disease, diabetes, cancer, inflammation, pain, but also mind, body, spirit. And yeah. that's, so if, if uh, that's why I love this book. So there's a, there's a portion, a big portion, vegetables. Uh, the other big portion is grains. Right, right? whole grains, whole unprocessed grains. grains. What, some people have no idea what the difference. Whole grains and oh, processed yeah, grains. Oh, yeah, big difference. Um, whole grain is like brown rice. Mm -hmm. White rice is not mm -hmm. whole. Uh, whole grain is like bulgur wheat. Bulgur mm -hmm. wheat is wheat that's cooked as kernels. But... What we usually do is white flour. Uh, and the problem with white flour is when you grind up, most people don't know this, mm -hmm. when you grind up starches mm -hmm. into a fine powder, it acts like sugar. Yeah, wow. white flour. Here's something. So that's why I love donuts. <laughs> <laughs> they <cupcakes. laughs> yeah. Yeah. So here's something most people don't know uh -huh. is that... Um, White bread, which uh -huh. is a starch, it's uh -huh. a complex carbohydrate, mm -hmm. has a higher glycemic number than table sugar. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it, you, you, people are stunned. And you know what's even more stunning? Uh -huh. Even whole wheat bread, if it's commercially processed, has a higher glycemic number than table sugar. Just look it up. Wow. Yeah. The other two, I'm mind blown. The other two sections on here, um, is it legumes? Yeah. Yeah. That's the protein, protein part, protein right? Protein, right. What, what is, in your opinion, what is the best um, plant protein? Oh, the, yeah, actually, the, that's a, a very interesting question, but you have to realize there's protein in rice, there's protein in uh, vegetables, there's protein, of course, higher in beans and legumes right. like lentils. So you and, just want to look for the ones that are higher. In, right, in, but if you want a lot of protein, of course, uh, it's it's beans and lentils and tofu and you know black beans and all kinds of beans have, have protein in it but just realize there's even protein in white rice wow yeah doesn't mean you got to go out and eat it right it right rice. but yeah brown rice is full of protein do, do you think and and based off of the y and i diet is, is it safe to say that we could we could change ourselves if we have disease if we just ate genetically or ethnically what we were designed to yeah eat? actually you can do that but it, you don't have to limit it to your own culture. Mm -hmm. um, it's good to do that, but uh, there are healthy foods around the world, and um, human beings are more similar than they are different mm -hmm. uh, ethnically. If you see a curve of the amount of fat you consume mm -hmm. and cholesterol, for example, it's a straight line. It doesn't matter whether you're African, European, mm -hmm. Asian, Pacific Island, it doesn't matter. You all fall on that same curve that when you eat lots of fat and saturated fat, your cholesterol goes up. Yeah, are you are you still doing your program today? Well, I, I not during you, not during the pandemic, right? But course. I'm actually trying to. 
I'm trying to go online and make it an online program. So Dude. that's... Uh, I, I yeah. and, and I have to say personally, I, I the last program, the last class you had was a, was a year ago, and I remember going to the to the it was a graduation, right. and to talk to your clients and your patients to actually see there was this one gentleman, BP through the roof, mm -hmm. um, A one C, just right. just you know on the basically he told me I was on the verge yeah. of and going at any time. He did your program for, I think he said he did a couple times, but he said within the first time, and how long, it was like 10 days? It's just weeks? 10 days. It was a 10 day program and I would drop, I, I've i dropped people's blood pressure from 190 or 200 all the way down to 120 in 10 days. What what else? What other things do you see with this? Uh, 10 -day? I've seen I've seen people's cholesterol go down 70, 80 points in 10 days. Wow. So I, I tell people, if you can do that, uh -huh. why would you go on medicine first? Wow. You should try the diet first. So we're gonna, food is medicine. Right, and um, if you go to drshintani.com, uh -huh. I think, drshintani.com, I talk about it and gradually I have to morph it. I don't, I don't <laughs> have a choice to, to uh -huh. I have to go online and, and make it an online program. How many books have you written so far? Uh, if, you, if you include books I've written right. for others, uh -huh. about 18 books. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. See, I I laugh because I know how busy you are. Yeah. I know yeah. how to, to get an appointment with Dr. Shintani is 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 amazing. Yeah. Uh, when you get it, so when you when you do get an appointment with it, just hug him for, for five minutes. <laughs> but eighteen books, um, Kahu, Kupuna Council, Why and I Diet, um, Peace Diet. Where do you go from here? I mean, well, my my goal uh, is. My, you know, if I had all the resources mm -hmm. in the world, I would spread. I, I, I think, by the way, I think you are a very important part of <laughs> Hawaiian culture because uh, I've told you this before. We need to promote Hawaiian culture mm -hmm. around the world, right. the culture of aloha, mm -hmm. the culture of healing. Mm -hmm. Because I, I said, you know, you can, ha you know, the world is going to become more diverse. Mm -hmm because of technology, travel, et cetera. You can't help it. Mm -hmm. So you can handle diversity the way they do in the Middle East where they blow each other up to pieces mm -hmm. because they're different. Or you can be like Hawaii where we embrace the differences, like right? That. And I aloha like each other. Right. So the question is, which is sustainable? On one hand, you have death. <laughs> right. On the other hand, you have aloha and life. Uh. So Hawaii is the future of the world. And if, if if I had all my druthers, I would promote the, the spirit of aloha, mm -hmm. not just in Hawaii, right. but all over the world, Worldwide. so that so that people would embrace each other and aloha each other instead of blowing each other to pieces. Wow. When kupuna speak, when kahu speak, aloha, you got to <laughs> listen. That's the main thing. Mahalo, mahalo, mahalo for making time and being here and sharing. Um, I can sit with you for days and, and, and talk about uh, all of these things. Uh, mahalo for your ike and, and, and teaching me. Um, and I have to say, you know, being part of the Kupuna Council, the, what I absorb from you folks is, is amazing to me. And it's my kuleana uh, to carry that on. So mahalo for that. Uh, join us. Uh, if you're joining us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Comment down below. You want to find out about uh, Dr. Shintani's one of his 18 books or read all 18. We're going we're gonna to get him on. We have to get him on audio book soon, right? <laughs> so we're going to do that. So if you're joining us, thank you very much for doing that. Culturize.com is the website. I'm Makani. This is Dr. Shintani. Mahalo. Mm -hmm.